In this video, I'm going to discuss making responsive design part of your needs analysis. I had an interesting conversation today with a colleague of mine who was asking, what's the optimal screen size for Adobe Captivate? And, you know, there really is no answer to that question. There's no single one answer. There's many answers to that question. Um, the, the key thing to keep in mind is that, you know, if you're designing training for a particular organization, you need to include those types of decisions early on, in fact, right up front in the needs analysis stage. So when you are conducting your needs analysis, determining the need for training, one of the questions that you're going to ask yourself along the way is, what method am I going to choose to design this training? And if e-learning is a possibility, part of that, and this decision may already be made for you, but if it hasn't been made, part of that decision will be to take a look at the equipment that the users across the organization are using. So I've actually done a couple of things here just to simulate what kind of decision that I would be making if I was working within an organization. So I'm assuming that everyone has a computer at least as good as the one that I'm using to actually record this video on. And uh, what I've done is I've used a tool that's available. It's freely available. How big is my browser.com? And this will tell you exactly the resolution of the browser window. Now, my actual resolution is larger than this, but these numbers represent the area that you see here in yellow on your screen. And I did the same thing for my iPad and the same thing for my smartphone and came up with numbers for all four of the possible scenarios. Uh, in that particular instance. And what I mean to say is that I did uh, a, a simple little deduction. I assume that let's say this organization, this hypothetical organization I work for, will be conducting training both at workstations, computers like this one here, and the users may also be using their iPad minis, which um, can be either in tablet or portrait tablet uh, landscape or portrait mode and uh, when I tried landscape on my smartphone it was too small to give me decent numbers uh, so I decided to disallow uh, landscape mobile phone view so I've, I've deleted that from my options and I only have mobile portrait view here of a resolution of 559 pixels um, by 360, so 360 wide and 559 tall. So I've set this up to be perfect. Now keep in mind that these are simple breakpoints. Um, it, it will adjust for other devices that may get introduced in the future. But of course, these three devices, the uh, phone in uh, portrait mode and the iPad in both landscape and portrait mode and plus the desktop configuration. So I've got these three main devices set up. If others are, are introduced in the future, uh, it can scale, of course, to those different project sites. Now, because I, um, because I didn't want to add this uh, landscape mobile uh, breakpoint, I actually have the option, and this is a great feature in Adobe Captivate 9, uh, rather than having people see uh, a messed up looking breakpoint, um, I actually disallowed it. And you can do that from the edit drop down menu under preferences. And if you go into the project publish settings, you can actually disallow phone landscape orientation and put a custom message uh, that learners will see. So they'll see, uh, you know, please rotate your phone or something like that to portrait mode to view this course. Something like that, whatever whatever seems natural for your audience. And then that you've got that covered. 
And of course, when you when you preview this uh, project, this is only one slide, of course, and it won't be anything on the screen. The preview will show you, of course, all four of those breakpoints, and you can check for your content to span across all those different uh, breakpoints. So there should be something for everybody within all those possibilities, but that definitely gives you what you need there. But again, it goes back to your regular needs analysis. You need to consider this just like the learning needs of the organization. What are the technical needs of the organization? Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.